a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice comes from the cloud saying three things. This is my son, Isaiah 42, 1, whom I have chosen, Psalm 2, 16. Listen to him, Malachi 4. Here's God the Father. The Father rebukes Peter in mid-sentence and says, No! That's my son. Those two guys are not equal to my son. They are here to give witness to his glory. Friends, this is the third witness. Moses is one, Elijah is two, and here's the third witness. Here comes the Father's testimony. He'd just been rebuked by Jesus, and now he gets rebuked by the Father. Bless his heart. <laughs> what does he say? Listen. Listen to what? Listen to what he's saying about his death. Listen to what he's saying is about his suffering because his life is about to become your life. His cross is about to become your cross. His suffering is about to become your suffering. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue confess. And when the disciples heard the voice, they were engulfed in this cloud. And in Matthew 17 and 6, it says they fell face down and they were terrified. I just love this, just flat. It's the same thing that happened in 1 Kings chapter 8 when the glory of God descended on that temple. And here comes the weight. If you look at Mark 9 and verse 8, Jesus came to them and he touched them and he said, Get up, don't be afraid. And all at once, they looked around and they saw no one with them anymore except Jesus alone. The preview of the kingdom and the glory was over. It was gone. And now it is time to come down from this mountaintop experience back into the reality of a fallen, sinful world. And that's exactly what happens, continuing on in verse 37. The next day, when did this happen? The next day. Doesn't take long. They came down from the mountain, and there is a large crowd ready to meet them. And a man in the crowd calls out, Teacher, I beg you to look for my son. He's my only child. A spirit seizes him, and he suddenly screams. It throws him into convulsions, and he foams at the mouth, and I, it scarcely ever leaves him. It's destroying him. I begged your disciples to drive it out, but they couldn't. And Jesus says, You unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long should I put up with you? Bring your son here. And even while the sin, sun was coming, the demon threw him to the ground into a convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the impure spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father. We have all experienced times of exaltation on that mountain. And we've seen things from God's perspective in a way that we haven't ever before. And we want to stay there. But God will never allow us to stay there because the true test of our spirituality, the true test of Christ in us, the hope of glory, is in descending from that mountain. If we only have the power to go up, something's wrong. It's a wonderful thing to be on a mountain with God, but a person only gets there so that they can go back down into that fallen, demon-possessed world and lift up the name and the glory of Jesus Christ. In your name I call the light to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Hi. Suicide rates are rising rapidly. So most Jesus followers should prepare ourselves for a more active role in preventing suicides. We are on the front line since pros rarely get involved until a foot soldier helps connect people in crisis 
with trained professionals. E94.org is a Christian ministry dedicated to equipping the church to prevent suicide through free training of foot soldiers to prevent suicide through training, consulting, and resources. Get equipped to give hope and help and confidently refer people to professional counselors. Learn more at e94.org. Thank you.